And then all of a sudden, we get derailed again with the government saying there's some sort of the air is lava. And if you go outside without a mask, you will get a 99% survival rate virus. Oh my goodness. Stabbing. Welcome to the Superhero Academy podcast. I'm your host, Archangel. You'll own nothing and you'll be happy? Will you be happy if you own nothing? Wait, ladies and gentlemen, we've got my favorite guest here. It's uh, it's always a pleasure. It's always oh, a damn. pleasure to have Germ D here. He's been, been now, you must friend. have favorites when you say favorite. I have favorites, but you are. I think you are definitely my favorite guest Ooh, that I've ever, had, right I've ever had on my podcast. Hey, but don't get away from the topic here. Would you be happy if you own nothing? Uh, No. Clearly not, because I own a lot of things. But what if like some of this stuff could be... Um, I, I guess you wouldn't be allowed to have all these things. Well, yeah. The question That's is, like, thing. this is coming from their uh, well, Twitter see, page, so right? Here's the thing. It's actually coming... Yeah, it's coming from their Twitter page. And on Twitter, on Twitter, they say this. This is the funniest thing. Like, you'll own nothing and you'll be happy. This is how our world could change by 2030. Yeah, but you have the article. Pull up that article that you have on their actual website. This is so crazy, because like the last couple of weeks, it's all been... It's a conspiracy... When they have... What they're talking about. But they have actual plans that you can read that are just out of this world. How and, my life and, could change. Or the Great Reset. This they is their homepage. It, they, they call it the Great Reset every once in a while? This is the homepage. It's, Justin Trudeau says it's an absolute conspiracy. Then why am I reading about it on their fucking website? Yeah. It's wild. Am I allowed to swear on this show? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. Okay, very cool. Because <laughs> sometimes it might blow up. These are rich people. This is the World Economic Forum. So this is like, hey, you're rich? Come to our forum in Davos, Switzerland. Mm-hmm. In the, mountains, in the mountains, and we'll have wenches serve us, and we'll talk about how we're going to change the world, and then pay other fucking idiots to make websites about it and write about it. Mm. I love only nothing. Did you see that guy's face smiling? I no. can't imagine. They take away my Mustang, and I'm smiling. Okay, okay. So let's back <laughs> up here. We've read about something called the Great Reset. You, I've, we've read about it as Reset 2030. Uh, Possibly I, Agenda 21. Possibly uh, the uh, New uh, World Order. Well, yeah. In the past, it was often referred to as Agenda 21. They, it almost feels like they have to rebrand it because like people are catching on. Okay, 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 okay. We got this other great but, campaign. That's exactly what they are doing. Yeah. But, it, but don't you feel like They're they also kicked it, it down the line a whole bunch? They kicked it down the road, yes. So this is what makes me question if it's even going to succeed because okay. you had way more of a chance. So what, what succeeds? Like, let's back up and tell people what we have read to some degree about what these plans look like. Well, when we were kids, 9-11 happened at school. Yes. If you remember. At our school, they played it on TVs. And these TVs, to this point, had never been turned no, on. Do you remember? I agree. These fucking TVs were never on, and they became weaponized all of a sudden. Like, <laughs> turn on, and they're like, planes hitting towers. And dude, we were legit. As kids, it doesn't matter. We were stupid, bro. We literally thought planes were coming after this centennial right now. No, Could be it, planes it, coming it, this it was fear. It was, it was fear across everyone's heart. Yeah, they there was no way. There was no way because you, you you're imag you could imagine how it would happen to um, your buildings in your town. Yes. Although, when you really think about it, it's like okay, it's very rare that would happen. But in the state of fear, you cease to have this logic, and all things become possible. Yeah. And, and then all of a sudden, we're marching on Baghdad or whatever in Afghanistan. Forget and that. I didn't go there. What yeah. happened to us? We got to go to the airport, and they have to be like, "Hey, stand in this fucking microwave now," because CIA assets blew up some buildings. And you're like, for real right now? Oh, I don't want to do that. I'm going to not do that because you, can't, you can't force me. Okay, then we're going to have this person wear gloves and grope you. Mm -hmm. It's like, and both of us don't want this happening. This man getting paid right now and me, who clearly I wouldn't bring drugs across a stupid border. Yeah. I don't want to end up in like R They're, Rochester, New York. Can, <laughs> yeah. I, can, I really want to everywhere. smoke a joint. You can find them everywhere. Yeah. When yeah. We, we were even kids and we were going to Vermont and stuff. I remember going to a Mortal Technique concert. Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> and we're Dude, there. I've got a great story for you later. We're there and we're, we're trying to find weed, you know? And the Americans, they're like, yo, don't fucking say that out loud. And I guess it was more intense. I thought it was Vermont. Like, what's intense in Vermont? But apparently you go to jail for, for weed, so whatever. And they were fucking, there was a guy selling weed out of the Burger King bathroom. Oh, for sure. You go to the, the someone tells, tells you, like, oh, you go to the bathroom and in this stall, there's a guy selling weed. Like, it was his fucking office. Straight up. And uh, so anywhere you go in the world, there's going to be a guy in a stall like it's his office. Don't bring it across the border. I agree. Was the point of the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> so we got to get back on topic now because we're totally derailed. Like there was some sort of natives on the tracks because they don't want pipelines through their territory. And then all of a sudden we get derailed again with the government saying there's some sort of the air is lava. And if you go outside without a mask, you will get a 99% survival rate virus. 
Oh my goodness. <laughs> Shut down all businesses. <laughs> the, the, <laughs> oh, we're playing the air is lava. Like, come on. But you know what's funny? That is the best. People need to hear that in Quebec. Of what is going on right now. The air is lava. The air is lava. <laughs> Please wear a mask. That is hilarious. I find it very interesting that um, in the States, there's places where you have to... California, they're talking about wearing masks outside if you leave your house. Yeah. That is absolutely outrageous. I think if you did that to Quebecers here, they would... they just, I don't know, burn down the CBC or a something. A lot of people are doing it. A lot of people are, yes, but it, you're seeing mostly city folk. Outside of the city, yeah. outside of ain't city, no, nobody... Doing it anyways, everything. allegedly, ain't nobody wearing a mask. Outside of the fucking city. Fucking whatever. But I, mean, I agree. I it's, agree. It's city, it's city nonsense. It's almost like you guys have the 5G already and they're fucking pumping it in you. Because it doesn't make any sense. The level and, of fear and... Uh, and it's because people are closer here. Of course. And, and, and dependent. And, and, and closer here me, sounds scary. And what I mean by that is like, it sounds scary because there's... It, it's, a, it's a distancing kind of virus, right? And they, they made us afraid of being close to other people. And so when there's a lot more density, there's a lot more awkwardness. There's a lot more run-ins. There's a lot more collisions. There's a lot more like people being in the same spot all at the cafe at the same time, mm -hmm. kind of thing, right? Like, so there's a lot more like direct interaction. Where, when you live in suburbia, you're kind of get, like getting into your car, it's cold. So you got in your, in your garage and then drove out. But there's, a, a there's another store. side to that coin too, which is in the city, not a lot of people know their neighbors. Yes, which is, well, not even in, in suburbia, honestly. Okay, yes. But uh, just as I'm going with the point here was they don't know their neighbors. And because of that, they'll be um, questionable about their actions and potentially snitch on them. But once they go to the cafe and they have a group of friends, they, with those group of friends, they're more likely to break the government's rules. Yes. And actually, I would argue that humanity, if allowed to just be social, would smash these rules. And that's why the main point of it is you can't see no new friends. Yeah. 2020 is no new friends. And they fucking maybe instilled that in us. With That's actually a slogan from like 2019 or something. Where really? people are like, no new friends. Who is proud about not meeting new people and networking? It's you're clearly not people of the mycelium people who are like mushrooms who want to make connections. You, be must, you must be that bacterial type of person who just wants to devour their own self and collapse and die. Because <laughs> it doesn't make sense. No new friends. Whenever someone says that, you like, you twitch a bit and you're just like, you smile and you're like, get out, just going to get out of this situation now. But I'm actually pretty thankful that these people don't exist in my life as much. They only exist through like ethereal means, like through other people, third parties, and you hear about them. And sometimes you might run into them. But as right. you upgrade and you heal yourself, these vibrations, they don't come near you. And if they do... I don't meet those they people. Kind of, yeah, we, I honestly don't see those people. I mean, I guess they're around and I'm just like not interacting with them. Yeah. But at the end of the day... Yeah, I feel like I don't know normal people, like at all. No, me neither. I don't. I don't feel like I know anybody who's really normal. So f for me, which it's is like, hilarious. It's like, oh, this thing's still going on. So it's like now you got to become psychological master, doctor of psychology, yeah. and see like, okay, but why are people still going along with you know fear? A fear. Yeah, yeah, we can't get too much into it, what's it, really it's going fear, on, but it, it's, it, fear. It, it, it's fear. It's fear. It's fear. It's fear of of. Um, being socially shunned for not doing it. Of it's, course. That's one. Yeah. It's fear of of um, not sticking with the pack. It's fear of breaking down your identity. Like, because your identity believes that the government is doing something for you. It has to. If you're the type of person who's continuously following any rule. Of yeah, because you're dependent. You have to respect So you the have rule. to be... Well, you have to respect the rule. You can't bite the hand that feeds if exactly. you're not feeding yourself. That's the whole point. And yes. you know how many people in Canada work for the government? Oh, dude, it's unreal. It's, it's un unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Yeah, literally, I mean, part of the reset 2030 thing is probably that we're all going to work for the government and we won't own anything. We'll have a UBI. That's what I think reset 2030 is. Of course. Yeah. They've already it's, said that. The, yeah. You knew from the beginning when they gave CERB, it's like that's universal basic income. income. And that's what he was referring to with that. Out yeah, UBI. Yeah. That's a universal basic income, which was the part of the Agenda 21 strategy, which was something that we always knew about. So let's get back to we were at school, 9-11 happened. Yes. It, it marked our lives forever. So For eventually sure. at one point, you, you think about it. And this is the truth, okay? We might have started smoking weed. Oh, we definitely started. Smoking. So now when you start smoking weed, the government was literally like, weed. Eh. Back in the day, let me tell you something. Weed was illegal. If you're listening to this in 2030 and you're still on a computer, <laughs> weed was illegal back in the day. Mm -hmm. So we were smoking weed and that kind of breaks down a little bit of the government's mm -hmm. view when they're like, well, why can't we smoke this plant that literally fucking does that, doesn't do anything? And we're all laughing and having fun and yeah. just like whatever. But what it did do was- Gateway. 
Yeah, it was a gateway into maybe they're not saying the truth about certain things. And it was a great way to critical thinking. That's really what it boils down to. Because when you're critical when, thinking, might just come with age. It does, but it also comes with experience and then confirmation of experience. So if I tell you a rule, and the confirmation of that rule is that when you break the rule, it happens. The thing I said that I warned you about happens. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, run a red light, you might get T boned. That happens. So you respect that rule. Yeah. Right. But when it came to weed, when people smoked weed, they realized, oh, wait a second, it's maybe not the bad thing that everyone's talking about, and it's actually kind of helpful for a lot of people. Now, can it be detrimental? Yes. Can people get fucking addicted to it? Absolutely. Can they get super lazy and addicted to video games or just lose themselves for like a decade? I mean, that's just Absolutely. a vice, though. They can always vice. pick another vice. They would have picked another vice and it would have had that vice to yeah. some degree anyway because it's the type of person that does that kind of bullshit. Yeah. It, it's your mentality, right? Like, yes, you can be not surrounded by really great people. And of course, if other people are sucked into that energy, they suck you into that energy, right? And, and, and video games are constantly sucking people's attention and energy for sure, as is social media, as is everything. If you're mm -hmm. watching this right now, to some degree, you've given me your attention. And that's beautiful, and I appreciate it. But keep that in mind. You keep that in mind. Keep that in mind that you're giving your attention away. And hopefully you're like painting or you're or, doing or something you're creative and you're listening. Or you're investing it by watching things that inform you. Yeah, totally. But um, the constant need for stimuli... And not making your own and being a creative means that you are a consumer and not just a consumer physically of socks and underwear, yeah. but also spiritually. And uh, you are not able to make your own and therefore you're vampirically going around looking for other things. And don't be upset that I use the word vampiric. It's just, you know what I mean? It's about sucking. It's sucking energy. Sucking energy. It's taking more than you give. Yeah. Period. That's what he means by vampiric. And when you really figure it out, you will actually give it away because it's a bountiful, holy grail. Because the more you give it away, the more you have. The more you have. It's a it's a paradox. That's it, but that's it, that's that's money. That's everything. That's everything. It's magic, and um, we both know about this. And I think a lot of people, you can't believe it on face value, but you have to take small steps to understand that you've manifested everything in your life. Everything you've ever done, you thought about it, and you've acted it out based on the steps on that the you thought would or come. Or, yeah. Or and that you people just had, advise you to take and, and then eventually worked and blah, and, blah, blah. And anyone who's ever helped you has just showed you that you had limiting beliefs. Yes, 100%. You're having limiting beliefs. Now, that's a, a, you can't fly right away, right? You can't jump off a building and say you're going to fly because you're going to doubt it. You have to just take it in steps of like the, the, the next slightly believable thing yes. and you prove and it plausible. and you prove it and you, you go plausible. after the plausible go after the an possible exp an expanding comfort zone of plausible yeah and then from plausible you'll discover that some of them are possible and then the next one is possible and the next one is possible and the next one is possible and everyone who doesn't maybe know this because our we've got an expanding audience on this podcast um germ d is an artist he makes art for a living in many other ways mm -hmm. uh, many senses of the word um i've got a question for you when did you do, when did you first discover you were an artist when well, did you like first know and use kind of the word artist to describe describe yourself? I don't know. It must have been when I was like a, a teenager or something where it finally dawned on me that I was doing this all the time. And you, then you get the flashbacks of being like five, four and all this stuff. And you're always drawing. So you're just like, okay, that's what I always did. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I'm that kind of person. And then I started making t-shirts or something like that. Or I had the Photoshop and I was doing the Photoshop stuff at the time. Because at first I was using the computer a lot when I got a computer when I was young. Um, and then eventually realized that I don't really like the computer and I liked what I was doing more as a younger person. So I went back to that. Yeah. But I had a period of like teenage into my mid 10 years, I would say of heavy art. digital stuff. Digital art. Yeah. And you were making design with t-shirts and a bunch of stuff. You were doing all kinds of, you were doing uh, uh, Photoshop jobs as well. Like even for money and stuff. Doing logos for people. Logos. All exactly. kinds of things. Yeah. I was yeah. always just doing that. So it's just a natural thing that I fell into. You taught me the art of like, um, Business. Doing, yeah, co well, convincing someone of an end. So, like, something that they need and uh, yeah, they would pay you for it. Yeah. Now, remember my strategy, I'll totally do it for free. Mm -hmm. And then if I'm successful, you pay say, me, hey, pay would me. you pay me? Not, I would, or would not even me pay me. Time. It's just, would you hire me for hey, a would you, uh, would you mind donating or something like that? So, it's like, you're going to pay anyways. But you, the fact that you thought it was free was opening the door every time. And I was always successful. It's 100% yes. Yeah. And in Intensity this scenario, especially when you're young, you're like 18, you're always going to undersell yourself. Yeah. So course. when you play this card, you always get more than you expected and you find out the market value of what you're worth. Because someone will give you like 200 bucks and you would have been like, damn, I'm going to ask for 50. Mm. Next time I'm going to ask for like, well, eventually it's a you're confidence like, game. eventually you're like, oh shit, I'm it's a worth confidence this. Game. Because it's a confidence game and it's also a game of like, of, um, 
Of, the guy wants to show that he's no, but he it's has opportunity the money cost. too. It's know? opportunity cost. It's, it's also, also opportunity a bragging. Cost. There's yes. also a, there's bragging a bragging in place. There's a brag so of a the guy. Great the, marketing strategy. Yes, and we eventually used that in Dreamcatcher. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And we just destroyed it's funny. everyone I with that marketing strategy. I pulled up the, the Montreal Gazette article today earlier. I'm submitting. I'm I'm submitting for my um, blue verification tag, like getting you know, verified on Instagram yeah, and Facebook. Yeah. And you have to put that. And I have to like there. put all the things that where I've been mentioned and blah so blah. blah. So this was a went, show where it's free to get in. There's free food, and you're gonna win a prize at a contest. And all of it was gotten by us. There's a fucking me. guy who won like pots and pans because he ate like a huge pig, and he's behind the camera. And I was right hoping now. he would sound who, sound in right who now. Who is that? Who is that? Guy? <laughs> 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 you killed it, I dude. I was the winner. Oh I yeah, won yeah. That. it was I, epic meal time. Epic meal time was there, and they don't go up on stage no they didn't but understand the marketing content. they don't understand the marketing and, value and, no, no, no. and then and then we brought we were the people who introduced the belt idea we brought out a belt a wwe belt oh, yeah, and, they and then it. on their videos they had a fucking belt yeah whatever yeah. They're, they're those kind of guys yeah. they're all kind of guys, west right? islanders yeah where it's like <laughs> after a while after you after you prove the model then they're like now we'll try it they're just west Islanders. whatever it's fine uh it was a great show and even that idea um yeah, it, they, it just works. It they just also works. did a calzone like the next fucking week. It was like, yeah, yeah. It was like a we had done a calzone eating contest, yeah. and then they did a calzone. You know what's funny? I never tuned in, and I never saw it. And I invited them to the show, but yeah. that's how little I cared. It's like, no, hey, I, what do you guys? You guys want to come to this thing? We'll do an eating contest, and they were like, how did we meet them? I can't remember. I, I reached out. Somehow. I reached out. I knew one of the guys, and I was like, do you guys want to do this thing? We'll do an eating contest, and you guys do an eating contest. And the guy was like, that's a fucking great idea. I remember like, Dude, there'll be a belt. Jack. Like, you guys don't even, you, do, you don't have to eat. We're going to make the crowd eat, and you just stand there and get all the hype and attention and the camera. And then the footage is great for you guys. Totally. And then I thought we can get on their YouTube channel using yes. this method. I remember this. So this is a great strategy. I was also part and of And then game. when he went to whatever boy's name is, he was like, no, but you could do it. Because he didn't come up with the idea or something. Who cares? So they came, and you know what they wanted to come? A bottle of Jack Daniels. Oh, you're so... Oh, what a writer. So what did I do? I bought a bottle of Jack Daniels, allegedly at the fucking store, and gave it to them there. And it's like so stupid. Just do the fucking thing that would have got you. It would have been awesome. And it was awesome. Like it you was ate awesome. that calzone so fast, so fast. Everyone was in shock. Everyone was in shock. So basically, I want to explain the show because it, it sounds weird if we're just talking about yeah. someone ate a calzone. The show is a gong show. A variety so it's, show. it's a variety show of all these artists in Montreal. And trust me, it wouldn't be just music, right? We had the hypnotists. We had uh, magicians. magicians sometimes. But we wouldn't have like... We had burlesque. We had burlesque. The hip-hop dancing. Uh, bands. Remember those those uh, Japanese samurais who fought in the dark type yeah, shit? That, that was, was crazy. Amazing. Yeah, so there's all these different talents from Montreal coming out and displaying it on one of the nicest stages. The Rialto in, Theater. The Rialto Theater, which is just a historic... It's a historic site in Montreal. So they got... Shut down, due to The Rones. Oh, yeah? Well, I thought it was just uh, Ezio's terrible management. No, no, I mean... <laughs> Everybody wants to see the Beatles reenactment no. every Saturday night. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, no, good people, and it was a great time. And uh, yeah. I don't know if we're going to be allowed to do that in this stupid rich person plan of uh, 2030. Well, we won't own anything, apparently, according to this. Well, that's I see, I see that rolling out as only for the people who end up accepting the UBI, the universal basic income. Yes, it's going to be some sort of mark of the beast thing for sure. There's yes, going to be an immunity like a, you passed. You got branded. You got branded. You got branded. And you know what I want to bring up because it's totally not conspiracy anymore? There's mini robots in the, in the vaccine that they're talking about. And they have pictures of this mini robot that looks like a tree. And he's supposed to be confirmed in the Pfizer vaccines that are here that yeah. came out? Yeah. Really? Moderna. No, uh, Moderna hasn't been approved anywhere yet, but the UK just approved Pfizer apparently. Oh yeah. Well, there's it's it's called like um, anyways the new one. You can write mini robots. There's Boris Johnson talking about it at the at the UN recently. He's like it's gonna be like Star Wars with little fighter jets inside your bloodstream. He's literally saying that. He literally said it's gonna be like Star Wars with little fighter jets in your bloodstream. Yeah, pull it up. I'll keep talking. So it's so strange because I went to my dad's house at one point. Like dad, like like look. You got to see this video. And he, he saw it and he's like, I don't know if that's real. Boris Johnson wouldn't have went to New York at the UN. This is the level that we're dealing with where you are faced with a video and you're claiming it's a deep fake to get away from the, just to be in cognitive distance. Dude, they're talking about how there's fighter jets in there. <laughs> you got to like, at some point, just be like, that's a hard no on that there, friend. Fighter jets in blood. Boris Johnson, fighter jets in blood. <laughs> right? Boris Johnson, UN nanorobot. You got to always think how people um, put things up on YouTube. And this is exactly what the title would be. Nanorobots. Nanorobots. Is that what he talks about? Well, there you go. AI robots and chicken That's speech at Brexit. Ago. That's a year ago, yeah. What about that one right there? It's a couple. It's no, they're all a year ago. 
maybe they removed it. They removed. This is like a video. urge caution. It's the one with the, it's definitely he has a green background. It's the green background. Like this. Yeah, yeah. That world, like a form or whatever. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this is always hot, hot, you know, when you try to go to the computer and it's not there anymore. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, like uh, microchip. This is the problem with YouTube now. You search something on YouTube and they're instantly like, here's some CNN and five months. All these NBC things at the top. This used to never happen. The internet is ruined. People are on two apps. The apps are full of global news. When global news was never there, they were the TV thing. Will micro tri- uh, microchip implants be the they next did big bring thing in the, Europe? Uh, the news pretty high up in YouTube. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, they have a whole news, band now. Define news. This is the thing. This is the problem with with YouTube. Is what what do you f- define as news? You know what I mean. Sure. Like it, it, like at this point now that we're saying late night hosts are news because they're late night hosts are constantly on the train. That is, page. but that is they're the constantly. classic propaganda because it's the way that they make us laugh about about the pain. Yeah, they and make us laugh about the pain. But they're not at all comedic anymore. It's not funny. It, they're it's just lost trying its to luster for sure. They're just trying to distribute the news because the news can't even do it anymore. The news is like tonight there's another hundred cases. It's literally every night, and there's like a, that spinning graphic of the virus because it doesn't exist. So it's got to be a fucking you got to see like it. a monster. Yeah, it's got to look monster in the back, dude. Next time you see the news, remember I said that there's always the virus somewhere on the screen, and it's a fucking virus. You're not even you Isn't never see it a virus. Amazing how simple integration of art in news. That's why I notice it. Yeah. They're like trying to scare you with a thing you would have never seen anyways because it's a virus. And there it is, like three of them spinning Just slowly spinning towards slowly. you. Towards you, eh? Not away from you. Towards you like it's in the fucking air. It's so stupid that if you aren't if you, if you aren't aware, you're being attacked. You're being attacked mentally because you, you can't subconsciously know exactly what they're trying to uh, convey. And that's the magic. They put an intent into that graphic, which is it's coming towards you. And it's super scary right now. And your subconscious is like, loud and clear. Yeah. And your conscious is not saying, hey, hold on. They're it's actually, not defending. It's, it's not, not always defending. defending. You're actually, it's just seeing your it. guard is so down. Your guard is so down because you're seeing hundreds of thousands of ads. And, and also the music is probably like, da, 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 and the girl's like, tonight, 100 cases. And it's like all this like primal drums and things like that. Startle you. To get you kind of amped. Once you see this, once you put on the they live glasses, you cannot take them off. Everything becomes the world is a stage. It's all WrestleMania. <laughs> I love how we're back here. This is right before the, the Rones. to WrestleMania. Yeah, right well, before because the Rones, they know. So the last they, time we were on this podcast, we went to WrestleMania. And by the way, if you're looking for Germ, if you're looking for, for who, who's talking here, he's an art, again, Canadian band artist. So there's a reason why we're talking about all this banning, you know, information. Oh, they banned all me fucking stuff. all of October. Yeah, they literally banned Germ. I witnessed this. They banned Germ, full stop, leading up to the election and for about two weeks until they announced Biden's uh, <clears throat> victory. Yeah, which I don't care. I know, but it's red cr- team versus blue team. No, it's it's, so it's, it's like, that yeah. they, they did a giant, they did a blanket against memory. Yeah, they That's censored. What they did. They, they censored, censored anyone who was doing memory or anybody who was they talking censored. about. And I can't believe that doesn't alarm the people that they're censored because they didn't notice. They deleted. Uh, if you had, if you had sense, bought, if notice. you had bought 1984, the book on Kindle, yes. it disappeared. What this year? No way on your Kindle, and they gave you your money back. Now there's no they they claim they didn't get way. the rights to George Orwell. Da, da, da. Hey, listen, it's Amazon. If there was a price to pay, they'd be like, yeah, whatever. Here's the fucking money. For 1984, they would have the, obviously. They would have just paid. So you got rid of 1984 on Kindle, and it just vanished from everyone's thing. Listen, that's book burning. That's ex- we, this is all the things you grew up, and they're like, whoa, wait, 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 wait. Amazon long. vanishes 1984 from Citizen Kindles. No way. What's Citizen? What do you mean? Did they literally from Kindle, say... From Kindle devices. Okay, but Citizen is the name of the Kindle, right? Yeah, it was in 2009. Okay, I thought they meant like... Oh, it's in 2009. They're just calling people Citizens two, now? No, no, that happened in 2009. Okay. They still did it. I agree, but I'm just saying that it happened in 2009. Oh, okay. This is well, the world we live in where they're like, hey, don't read that book where it's like totally what's going to happen, okay? Because yeah. I think to a degree, this is my personal opinion, but I think that Jeff Bezos is so rich that he's literally like... I'm going to merge with robots because I totally can. And he's paying for people to like figure out a way to make him merge with robots so he can live forever. This is my honest opinion. I think this man is trying to live forever. Mm -hmm. And also he might be already merged with robots and totally crazy and thinks that we all need to die. (laughs) It's possible that he thinks this. It's possible. Because like, where's the Iron Man who's coming to save us? Where's the rich guy who's like, hold on, let me 
Elon build Musk. a suit that will stop Corona everywhere. And he goes around spraying Lysol. <laughs> The, f- the, you the air is no longer lava. <laughs> <laughs> but there you is, can now breathe. But there isn't. And that's why it's, it feels like the world is a stage. Because there's like, whenever someone peeps up, like, hey, I'm a doctor. And like, I don't think this is the case. It's like, you just lost your license. And you'll never work in this town again. And it's like, where's the de- where's the people to that guy's rescue? He literally put his head in the guillotine and went like, everyone, please save me right now. I'm <laughs> trying to save you. And they killed him in front of you. They literally killed him in front of you. You're like, but that's well, always happened. That's been that's been a ritual that has happened a now. What's million interesting times over is throughout the ages. Now, what's interesting is the Adamson barbecue story that happened last week. You uh, know yes. the story in the Toronto story. Yes, the guy who opens up a barbecue shop in Toronto. He basically they the, Toronto shutting down or region. is Ontario shutting down? Right, Ontario shutting down around the GTA area specifically. I believe he's shutting down, and this restaurant owner is like, "Look, I can't shut down. I'm just going to stay open and." Let the Fine. cards fall where they yeah, may. Yeah, yeah. Let's see, let's see what happens. He's going to lose his business And a anyway. ton of people, exactly. Because he's losing it either way, so he might as well try and fight for it. But he stand. had, it's like the perfect storm. He had the, the he best had the, argument, though Costco was down the street. Yeah. And they had the food court open and they were selling food. Yeah. So, if they can be open, I can be open. It's not that yeah. he's the alone man here. It was a lone man versus a mega corporation. Great perfect story. story. It's the perfect story. Perfect story. Now, all you have to do, Dougie Ford, is not... Not mismanage this, you know? <laughs> don't, and, man, don't mismanage the PR nightmare. And he just totally mismanages it. He sends in uh, cops that like- 50 cops. 50 cops that just arm chain the whole thing so you can't get in and uh, block the streets. But so apparently sh- for a while, there were a bunch of people getting in and eating. And oh, dude, at one point there was 2,000 people. Yeah, up, yeah. At one there was 2,000 people and they couldn't stop it. Yeah. And luckily Canadians are so- Polite. They're so polite that it's like, hey, buddy, don't grab me and stuff like that. I'll stay distance anyway. So they can have these (laughs) heated situations. They can have these heated situations and it doesn't get too crazy. Um, But it's still an ongoing thing. Like, because he did that, other people were now willing to do it too. Can you get hot water? But you have to remember that the other people that come after this Adamson Barbecues, where I think his name is Adam Kelly, um, the people who come after that, your name doesn't get remembered. So always remember that. That if you want your name cemented in history, you better be the fucking first who does it. And don't wait until someone else does it and you feel safe. And maybe someone has already done it. But what I'm, the point is that you need to be brave. You don't need someone else to do it for you. You need to tell yourself that you'll do it yourself if you fucking have to. And if you have that in your mind and printed in your mind, then there's nothing that can stop you. And that's used in all forms of life. If you want something in your life, you want to turn your passion into a work, you better fucking believe it and that you could do it even if everyone in the world is against you. Because if you don't think that way, you're done. You're I love gonna how be this sold. is the second time in this podcast you just gave somebody like a like a straight up like advice, like go for your dreams, like do it, make it happen. Well, because Live that's, the, a lot of this is- that's what um, people need to do. A lot, a lot of, of this, this is to suppress that. Yeah. A lot of this is suppressing that. Whether, whether it's designed to suppress it or not, it is. It is. It, it just, just is. is. It's not human. A lot of people. A lot of people are losing the shirt off their backs. There's a lot of entrepreneurship that's ending, but there's also a lot of entrepreneurship that's starting. But I think there's a lot of betting. There's a lot of gambling. Well, right of now. course, of course, of course. The stock market is just insane. Absolutely. When, when it, this crisis, when these kind of things happen, things get wild. So it's, gambling is going to be up. Yeah. Prostitution is going to be up. Alcohol is going to be up. All weed. these, all the every black vice, market. Every, every vice. Every vice built. Are the casinos open? No, not the Montreal casino because it's run by the government. But but, but like where? Yeah, little no. Well, VLTs are probably open. I'll tell you that. The the slot machines in like places for sure those are open. Mm-hmm. Where they the people wear diapers and shit in their pants while they still play. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but they'll wipe it down. Don't worry. They'll no, put the lights. No, no, they're they're used to wiping it down because the people are shitting in their pants and fucking before. Them, it's so the, like before it's the so ridiculous. But that's the things that uh, and suicides. Oh yeah, suicide. there definitely is going to be a lot of suicides. Suicide. There's way more. There's way more sexual abuse, violence of all kinds. So, so uh, divorce, divorce. So like the the TV has Maybe. been weaponized. The TV is turned on and has become it's weaponized. Been weaponized. Yeah, but it really now turned on and was like it turned on again. Yes, it turned on high high alert every like, night. Every night, nine eleven. Same style. story. It's over, bro. Like it's, that's the energy you have towards the TV. It's over, bro. Just shut up. You know, if there was a government official here, it's the same vibe. Just shut up, bro. Your stupid story is over. But there's people who really buy into this fear and they don't want to think about all the ramifications because really it's a selfish thing. I don't want to die. And they'll tell you about how they're saving a grandma. Shut up, idiot. You're scared because you think you're going to die. It's so obvious. Why Why would you be scared about someone else's grandma? That's not enough fear to suspend logic. The only fear that suspends logic because you think you're going to die. Or your grandmother's going to die. Not even. 
Because then you'll think logically about how to save your grandma. Yeah, which is critical thinking. They can quarantine. You think you're going to die. Admit it. If you're really worried. And no one cares about you and no one cares about what you did. So fucking shut up. I just believe that people should have the choice. It's even the same for me, bro. Like if I die, who's going to care? Okay. So my mom's going to cry. Okay, great. That doesn't mean I shouldn't live my life because if things are scary and I'm going to die and I'm so important, I need to live. The only reason we need to live is to fucking make sure they don't have 2030 so people can sing and dance and have raves. It's really the only point. No. That's our whole purpose right now. And if we don't admit that to ourselves, that our life doesn't matter unless the children can have raves and the right to reproduce without <laughs> fucking people wanting to kill the fetus and all kinds of crazy Germ shit. Germ D, 2021. <laughs> you let the kids have raves. No, but for real. For real. No, Could you think of my I son and, and the next generation in this bullshit? Not having raves. That's, it's more upsetting. But they will. That's the funny part. No, because we're going to succeed. Yes. But. What well, we've <laughs> witnessed, what well, we've witnessed in our lives, can you think about the youth being robbed that? Because right now they're being robbed. If you're in high school, you're not having parties. No. What is high school? High school is fucking parties and well, social Jews, dynamics. Jews. And raves. And raves. And raves. And, 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 you're, and you've robbed premature them of that. Premature alcohol, premature you, smoking of weed. You robbed them of that and you, put them in a, yes. and you put them in a Zoom conference call and they're not learning anything. So what have you done to children? You robbed them of their, of their childhood. And when you look into all, how all these uh, big government states, whether it's communism or fascism, it, it's, it's the same thing. It's a circle, right? It's an if, ism. It's an ism. When the state controls everything, you know what beats them is children who eventually have enough. Well, children are also the ones who instate it, ironically enough, because yes. they're naive enough to believe some stupid story where you'll own nothing and be happy because they don't own anything yet. So like, yeah, sure. I'm my dad should lose his house. And it's <laughs> I'm like, okay. already happy. Yeah. So, uh, but eventually they, the next generation learns it's not right. And that's what topples these kind of governments is the, the youth and how we kind of saw it in Montreal with the youth and the red square and all that stuff. The youth can mobilize and because they're more passionate and when they're more passionate, they're suspending. Well, that's what, that's what we did. That's what we did when we walked out in the middle of a field and, and planted a tree. You know what I mean? That's, that's what, that's what. Yeah. You saw also it, Occupy Wall Streets. Yeah. Which are which were, I, but that instigated me big time, and then what instigated me more is that I went and saw. I was at Occupy Wall Street. I interviewed Lawrence, who ends up being an instrumental part of building Bahala at the beginning. Yeah, and then and then right after that, I'm kind of standing around. I end up interviewing another politician guy who's kind of known, and then I see fucking David, David Suzuki. Suzuki. Yeah, he's just across the street, just standing there, just looking and like kind of putting his head on it. He's like kind of scratching his head, like trying to figure it out. You know what I mean? He's trying to feel like the energy of the of the space. But he's David Suzuki, and he's got a very memorable face, right? So I see him. I'm like, that's fucking David Suzuki. So I run over, and it's the first time I filmed an interview, like a, like a real interview with somebody who like real no, reporting, real and reporting. It, and it got like fifty thousand views. Yeah, that was real reporting. It was you were real live report. on the scene. I was live on the scene. Something you found happened. The most I found interesting the guy, guy, the most interesting person who clearly has a track record yeah. and understands how to speak to the youth and understands how to speak to marginalized communities, who's Canadian famous, it, kind of world famous, but Canadian famous yeah, definitely. definitely, definitely. And and then and then. Yeah, I just recognized him and I did the interview and, and he had great stuff to say and mm -hmm. it went viral and it was amazing. So that instigated me, the youth, mobilizing. And, and this and is youth, something that everyone needs to remember. David medically. Suzuki is an environmentalist and uh, generally an awesome guy. Oh, of course. Let me tell you something. He was at Occupy Wall Street. What does that tell you? And I'm sure if you ask him about fucking Agenda 21, if he's real and not given a lot of money, he'll tell you it's bullshit. It's fucking garbage because the people that are part of the World Economic Forum, how did they get rich? You think they're just like, it just fell from the sky on them? They Pill made money pillaging selling arms. Resources. Pillaging resources. Yeah. Selling oil, selling arms, selling, selling gold, weapons. Selling whatever. The, anything whatever, can, bro. Anything to extract from nature. And it, we're talking real rich people. I'm not talking about the guy who owns Nike. We're talking about like they're selling bombs, bro. They're bombing things and then getting paid to rebuild the thing. Those are the type of people we're talking about. So they can't decide how the world gets saved because yeah. they're the ones that make it awful. Well, the they're literally the, the ones that we're about to stop. The front line has also changed as it's digital. You know, at the end of, of course, the day, yeah, at the end of the day, anybody's listening more. to this, anyone who's listening to this, I have this one big crutch, which is that I, I don't have a voice or I don't have a, an ability to reach my voice if I'm cut from the internet in some way, shape or form, or if I'm banished from the public forum. Mm -hmm. And it's the internet. And that's what happened to you in terms of the algorithms and, and Instagram. That's what happens to a bunch of different people who are speaking their version of the truth. And whether they're right or they're wrong, there's some level of letting people speak their truth that I think we need to continuously respect. And we should allow people to live their truth by having choice and understanding that, look, if the vaccines work, 
if the masks work, if you want to quarantine, if you want your grandmother to be safe, and she should quarantine, and we quarantine the old folks it's homes obvious. where most people have died. It's, it's so Everybody knows by now what the plan is. We should okay. just open up and let people who are compromised, we care about them. We care about them. We make sure so, they get so the vitamin C and yeah. we take them out. Like, come out for a walk and vitamin stuff like D. that. Vitamin D. We care about them. Vitamin D. That's what it's a. We all know that. But there's a fucking group of people that are hiding behind the color of politics and stuff like that. They're just manipulators. Mm -hmm. They're people that you want to cut out of your life and they're fucking trying to find their way back in. Oh, uh, you can't talk about certain things because it triggers me. I say, okay. Why does it trigger you? Oh, well, you can't talk about it now because I'm offended. It's like, okay, so you're going to silence a debate on a thing because you have an emotional inability to keep your emotions in check. Or to just, like, realize that you can, you can have differences with the people. The world is about compromise. If you think you get to control other people because you just left your mom's basement, that's not how the world works. The world is about compromise, and everyone's rights are kind of like their own and until they interact with someone else. But if you start infringing on someone else's rights to think a certain thing or like they're not being evil by thinking a different thought than you and you have to really get over that. Some people are too, and I think it's a, it's just a, um, it's a strategy. They know what they're doing. Oh, they're phenomenally good at They're psychology. manipulating. Well, they're I mean, manipulating there's the people. There's the, AI now. There's AI I'm talking now. about humans who are like, who are saying, you can't talk about that because it triggers me. I get it. These people are manipulating but, you and they know exactly what they're doing. Of course. And there's now technology that's coming out that's watching your camera while you watch things like Instagram or, of course, or, yeah, or they're or tracking your eyes. Content. Tracking your eyes or tracking your emotion. They're just tracking the facial, the micro expressions that your face. That's is why that do. guy was smiling so hard in yeah, the future. The micro, He's not happy. He just, the AI is watching his fucking ass. And if he doesn't smile exactly ear to ear, it's over for you, buddy. <laughs> Look how happy he is. <laughs> the fucking robots are watching me. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You were Jeez. saying they're tracking us. Well, I, I mean, they're, well, they're tracking our face. They're tracking our emotions and therefore they're able to track our response. And if they know that a particular emotion or a particular type of cat or a particular type of, of animal or a particular si uh, uh, astrological sign speaks to you in some way, shape or form, they can deliver you covert messages through those emotions, right? Like, they, because but everyone believes that it's for ads, right? Because today I'm trying to get on all these stupid- It is for ads. I released an album, I'm trying to get on the, on the, whatever, the apps that people are listening to music on, right? Yes, I'm trying to get on there. Funded. I, I'm a guy who just gets it done. Who's saying they're going to do it? You're going to do it. You want some money? Here's some money. Let's go. And- as soon as that transaction, that happens in 30 minutes. But right after that, what do I get? Ads out the wazoo because they know that what I'm after is we're talking about 30 minutes and they know. Mm -hmm. It's like there's a guy in the room with me and he's like, he's trying to buy fucking yeah, things. And then they, they start sending me ads everywhere. If I go on any app, there's ads about pay this guy and he'll get you your music exactly? here and we'll get you Whatever more you people want. and we'll get you people to listen to it. It's just... Nonstop. But it's it's so obvious that you're also researching. And they're seeing. They're just seeing your digital imprint. Yes, but who is doing this? People. Well, Facebook, maybe. It's, it's a system. one of the apps who bought the it's an AI. Yeah, but it's, it's robots. It's, Coded really, by it's money. It's money, right? Yes, so it's definitely money. Someone's trying to make ad revenue. Yes. This Facebook does that. Google does that. Yes, they build by the downloading these apps. They make you sign an agreement where they're allowed to bot check you. They're the ones who checking that for that fight for the revenue of the ad. So yeah. when the ads start coming, you don't know if it's Corporation B or Corporation A, but you can deduct that it's both of them together, trying to get the click, trying to get the impression, trying to get the percentage of the buy. Now that is going to happen regardless. In fact, the world is going to come to a point, and it is right now, where humans are ads. And they don't even fucking know it. They're there squatting in their tracksuit that they just bought online and gave Jeff Bezos money. I'm fucking so cool. I just bought this tracksuit. Does it validate me? That's literally what they're doing. Trying to get fucking likes. Your tracksuit didn't do anything in your life, friend. It's a fabric made by Chinese slaves or Uyghur slaves. Whatever. I'm probably wrong on this type of slave. But <gasps> oh my God. you're trying to validate yourself. It's a... Um, it's a, we all have to admit it. There is a, there's a mental issue that's happening and it's advancing with this. People are losing their minds and you could tell on social media. If you came to a photo development place and you gave your photos and I kept seeing selfies and I'm developing your photos, I'd be freaked out, dog. If fucking every photo was a selfie da -da -da, and it's all like the same, like duck lip. Ah. I'd be like, oh my God. Ah. And then you come back the next month with more. I'd be freaking out. I'd be showing everyone your photos. Everyone in town would know that you're crazy and you take pictures of yourself at this home. is why germ doesn't work at Walmart's <laughs> photo development. Oh, center. yeah. There'd be like a huge controversy. Like, how come everyone has copies of my duck faces? 
<laughs> it's like calendars. <laughs> it's November. It's December. <laughs> Isn't that that guy down the street? Isn't that Ricky? <laughs> Look, these things are, are, are oh. serious. And back in the day, we would have had to talk about it. But uh, now, because it might trigger Just people, we're, it's normalized. And we need to, th- we need to talk about this. <sighs> Germ, you should have a podcast. Yeah, I know, but I'd be You can have like further. a one-man show. I'd ban even further. I just like doing the, the <laughs> gags now. I just saw the gag last night where I paint this thing. That's like, I want to paint things and then and then like gag them. Are you doing Instagram reels yet? I did the reel where it was like, I have this painting. It's supposed to do this thing. It says I'm fine. I acted like I was fine and then I was fine. And then I was angry fine. So mm. I just did the, I like things that are two things at the same time. Mm. When you could just play Complex on. jokes. Yeah, just nuanced jokes and stuff like that. I don't want to stress too much. Like I've, I've, I will say just though. Just keep in mind that, that even content. if they block me, yeah. I'm going to succeed. Because there's of course. the artists. Think about the artists that are in China. Why don't you go t- Google You're gonna succeed. top Chinese artists? But they're I'll, all I'll, like, I'll tell you. They're all against the government and banned. And that's how they sell but things germ, for millions. Germ, I'll tell you that your content has definitely gotten heavier in terms of like the balance between you informing people and then you making me laugh is definitely shifted for sure. And a lot of people feel, I would say- Shifted I towards what? I'm not making you laugh? Not as much. With the fucking breaking news. Dude, it, <laughs> to me, because I know you, it's hilarious. It's amazing. Yeah. It's hilarious. I understand you. I understand I understand what's going on, but there's definitely, in my opinion, a shift where you can where you can like bring in the funny with less certainty. And at the exact, but not even less certainty. You, about, you haven't seen the fucking new anchor thing. The anchor I've thing seen, is hilarious. Dude, all your stories. We, we okay, can. but the anchor thing- is just that there is no there is no certainty to the character in fact the left guy plays like the right guy and the right guy plays like the left guy i'm literally doing inversion yeah to show you because once i show you the inversion you'll think about the middle point and that's probably where the truth lies or somewhere in between these two things and that's why you have to see the invertedness of it so you have liberal man doing conspiracies Mm-hmm. When normally they just talk about cases, and then you have the Alex Jones type guy telling them the, talking about the corporate narrative. Yeah. It's a it's a genius, and um, and I think that's going to be entertaining. And some people might not even understand the nuance of it, but that's fine. And they I'll, don't. They don't. I think. I but think it's still going to work. It's working because that's the intent. And, and plus, the major point is that I'm upset that um, the late night comedy shows just aren't funny. I agree. And I can't even watch them without like being cringed because it's a they live scenario. I the agree. Guy's not and funny. and, I'll, and so all I'm to... telling you is be keep being more funny. Oh yeah, totally. That's yeah. my plan. Good. That's totally my plan in the future. Yeah. There's nothing more that's left to be said other than to show what a human to is meant to do. To just show it descend. To show to show the 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 two different options. Yeah, the you option can... of following your own heart and your own path and, and your eventually own and your own energy. I know or the uh, or the, fu- the the pattern that that en- that makes you end up in a line. And what I mean by a line is just like some level of like a, a holding pattern or a waiting pattern where most people live. But you have a purpose in this life. Everyone does. And some people know what it is and some people have hints of what it is. Uh, they're just pretending that they don't know what it is. Yeah, because you, you, you know have enough is. You have enough to go on the path towards just the thing. You're scared. You know, you have to, you have. Not everyone does. Not everyone thinks they do. Put it that way. They could pretty soon. You're enough. That's the easiest way to say it. You're enough. Like you don't really need a ton of shit. Like you and most people. If Not you're that, listening, hold on. If you're listening to this, you have as much as Germ does, and you have Wi-Fi, and he doesn't, and he has a whole career doing it. Yes, I'm not. I'm saying more like it's not that you have to go on a journey to get a thing. You might already have this thing. It's just you might want to spend more time on the things you love. Of course. Now, in uh, my, I think the purpose of most people is like me and you is to is to show another path. Another path. What life could be like. And eventually, I think the other ones will lose steam. They'll break. They're weak. And eventually, they'll just be like, I don't want to be in my house anymore. I'm going outside. And they're going outside, and they'll lick the lampposts. <laughs> I just, I have to, you know, just stump something to convince themselves that it's fine. <gasps> <I'll> li- <laughs> and we'll pat them on the back and we'll say, welcome back. Welcome back. <laughs> Hopefully, I mean, that's the world I envision. I envision that they basically are like, I am kind of over outside, this. If 2021 or 2022... People go outside and are linking lampposts because they're that happy to be outside. Oh, they'll look everything. I'm, that is hilarious. They'll look everything. Dude, there's people who like meet people, strangers, full on strangers, and, and then go them. back home and lick their asshole. Okay? <laughs> okay? We know <laughs> these people. Okay? They're, and like, and then I ate the there. person's yeah, asshole. Right and you're Many like, people perform sexual acts with one another for sure. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah, well, yeah. Having sex with a stranger for the first time is a something, too, but uh, I took it to another level. No, no. Oh, a specific type of person who's licking assholes. Yeah, there's lots of um, them. Well, Are you scared of COVID? Is there one in frame right now? I don't know. Are you? 
No, I don't. I don't. I'm, I'm not. Um, I'm not into assholes. I love how he's answering this question. I don't know to tell you. If there has to be, like, what's the most unattractive uh, part of a human body? An asshole. It has to be an asshole. That's why it's, like, hidden between some cheeks. I wonder, is there... What's wor- like, Entrails. Because if I saw them coming out of you, that'd be fucking gross, too. Yeah. I guess so. Your brain. Something that shouldn't be. I've seen. But an asshole is a thing. It's there. It's just, like, if someone turned around and spread their cheeks and showed you the asshole, there's no situation in my life where I'd be like, damn, <laughs> sick asshole. Slightly aroused. There's no way. It'd always be the same thing. Like, con- <laughs> like think about what a cat does it to you. When a cat turns around, it's like, check out this asshole. You're like, fucking cats. You think, you literally oh. think, fucking cats, there's no one else who does that. Oh, <laughs> oh that's so funny. And it has to be a cat diss. It has you know, to be like an inside You know what the craziest thing is? That asshole bleaching is a thing. Like, people are literally making their assholes whiter. That's how many people are licking assholes. Yeah, dude. I, that, there's a ton of people licking assholes. Jesus. Yeah. So, you know. I don't, it must burn. <laughs> it must burn, and then you have to poop out of there. What if it's, <laughs> the what, if it's shaped? what if it's shaped? You better oil it and stuff. Anyways, oh, <laughs> I knew people who worked at fucking uh, pornos things, and obviously you get into the porno industry and the editing. Mm-hmm. They, uh, you're, getting, you're getting things you don't want to see. I'm not going to name, because whatever. No. You're going to see things you don't want to see, and there's something called uh, rose budding, apparently, that they really don't like to see. Rose budding. Yeah, and that's where like you have a prolapsed anus. Girl or guy could happen to girl or guy. And these people I thought, have to, I thought you said you weren't gonna get into it. No, I was gonna, you, you know what <laughs> I mean. I'm not gonna get one. into the type yeah. because maybe some people like that stuff. No, but definitely. these editors don't Somebody like seeing everything. a prolapsed anus zooms because people are fetishing over this, so they have to did you get the right zoom? Did you get the cr- right crossfade? So you got the crossfade wrong. You weren't looking, Jimmy. You really want to look and see when the glisten is really like glimmering on that inside of someone's anus. That's outside of their body now. And oh yeah, that's where they really get off. So you really want to hold that shot. Now cue the music. Cue the music. Cue the music. Okay. Now take her moans of pain out of there. No, no one wants to hear that. No one wants to hear that. Say that for the hardcore ones. Oh my god! No, but that's oh what the god. and this is this the is guy's a job. Comedy hour right now. This is the guy's job. So could you imagine now his job is that with a mask on? Oh my god, dude, quit your job, quit your fucking job, bro. This isn't your passion right now. Jesus. Oh. <laughs> I'm just gonna play a laugh track at this point. Just go just, on a tear no, right just, here. Yeah, help me out here. So just it's not so hardcore. Shit. But, but just go down. No, the tear. world. The world. We. That's the world we live in. Yeah, where people bleach their assholes and then other people are filming it. I'm with con- crossface. <laughs> I'm convinced, and you will. You will eventually it's know true, that. I'm- it's, it's true that people. What's true is that there's an enormous amount of videographers out there who are doing exactly that, and there's an enormous amount of editors out there doing exactly that every single day. Yep. editing it and and. The fact well, the world is like run on third. porno. You will have a VR set because the of porno. Sex. Yeah. The world is run on sex. Yes, but let's say VR sex technology and, and, and is and all apps. funded by porno. Sure. Every video that was like, and this one's 3D. Well, you can look it, around. Yeah. It's porno. VR and that. AR is all going to be porno innovated yeah. for sure. Like and that's, Oculus Rift That's how you that got 4K thing. that you're seeing us right now. You got 4K streaming on the internet because of porno. Basically. Fact, you got, you got we didn't need to see because of porno. Yeah. We didn't need to see... Uh, streaming video in 4K, unless we're watching Bono. Remember, <laughs> remember sports back in the day when sports looked like just I in the nineties. Used, I used to think, I used to think over and over and over again, how are you gonna make it even more real on the TV? And it's just like it's kind of gotten there though. That's it's why the headset's of, now on. Oh, it's crazy. That's why they want you in the headset. Yeah, yeah. Um, they're gonna put you in the audience. They're I gonna, mean, they're gonna ban audiences, which is weird. That might happen, like for yeah. a while. Or it's already happened. It's happened for the last like ten months, dude. I just realized. There's no hockey. No, there isn't. There's no hockey I know, in December. Montreal. In December. In December. That's, that's why it normally starts in September if you're watching from the States. Yeah. It's a huge thing in this town. It's huge money. It's everything. It's everything in the winter. It makes people go out of their house to go to a bar. And drink. And drink. And every other day, it's so important to our society. And y'all motherfuckers think you can close like that. Well, it's because they also finish we in like bu- July. They, they, there was a Stanley Cup. They played in like July or August or, or like it was into the summer. Yes, but they know that it's not a financial. It's not financially viable no, for them to continue on this path. No, but it's not so just that. So this is their it's little break. That. They're going to pull a little break and then say, you can't come and watch the Habs unless you have an uh, immunization pass. Yeah. For and sure. then guess what, friend? Not many people are going to go and pay 80 bucks and have the fucking no, immunization pass. No, a lot of people bed. are going to go. Dude, they're going to they're gonna be so happy that you can go back. They're going to take the fucking. That's how they give the vaccines. That's like an easy way. It's, it's to appeal to a flag that you agree with. To appeal to a flag that you agree with and then then do the, the whole, like, like think about how they do blood drives. 
right? They get the athletes to yeah, do you have blood. To keep in mind, you keep in mind, this is this is fact, okay? There's no more conspiracies left for me to believe in, except for mud flood, and it's pretty cool. You should check it out. Um, <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> do, 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 do. Conspiracy. So, <laughs> so they're they're saying that there's not one shot, but two shots, and you might not want to take the second one because the side effects are so bad. If you want to pull that up, they literally having articles about the stuff side effects. Well, one person made a claim apparently that the person like has a mental illness now. There's apparently a, a official claim. Allegedly, there's a guy oh, who died it? in Brazil after taking it. it was, Either yeah. way, they have to warn you that there's a side effect. So clearly, like. Okay, look, people are getting tested with COVID and they don't even know they're sick. So this thing's super deadly. You don't know you have it unless they tell you. Unless the but now they're going to shoot you with something and they tell you, you're going to get sick. That doesn't make any sense, bro, because the thing that I'm getting a shot for doesn't even get me sick. So now I'm going to feel sick and then I got to get two. So what's happening one is one. when you're saying, oh, they'll take it and they'll go to the Habs game. No, no, no. They're going to take one. Dang. And then how many of them want to take the second one? And then... How many of them, after being told, hey, you know, we said it was 94% effective. Listen, COVID mutated because if still people alive, took a shot or something. If they're still alive and their life is kind of similar, they'll probably take the second one. Oh, dude, where I'm going is it doesn't end at two. No, it just kids continue. Now continuation. there's a pass that says that you're up to date with your vaccines. Yes, like, a, like a tax. Guess like what, a, friend? Like a, like, it's another one coming it's and like another one plan. coming. It's like a license plate. They're going to give you a number. You're going to have one ID, one thing, and it's going to have a people, health pass. Now, blah, some blah, people blah. don't know this. Oh, God. But in Quebec... If you want to get welfare, but you say you can't work because you have a mental illness, and some people think this is a great idea, I'll just tell the government, "Hey, fuck it, I'm depressed. I can't. Uh, I can't work. I can't work. Give me the money." Yeah, idiot, you fucked up with your stupid story because now you have to take a vaccine every month to no get way. your check. And I know people that have this. I've met them. There's this, a guy when I lived now? when I lived in off Milan. Mm -hmm. When I remember when I lived on Milan, mm -hmm. there was a guy that lived around the corner that did hip hop. He rapped and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That guy was getting a vaccine every fucking month to, to collect a fucking check. Interesting. Yeah. And it's like, what What the hell is this, bro? Like, just say no and they still have to give you the check. <laughs> like, I don't understand how you get involved in this situation. There's people who are literally, like, not even looking for a testing. job. They're, They're not even looking for They're a job. They're so desperate that they would say yes to anything to get yeah. the check. Yeah, yeah. And, they, and now you're literally giving a corporation some money to inject you with something like what? I'm depressed, so you have a serum now? And every month you keep giving it to me and it's not working apparently because I'm still on welfare. So mm. what is this vaccine? <laughs> it's not a cure. <laughs> so what is going on? Just and, testing. and you brought up a UBI and yeah. universal basic income. Could it not be linked to another thing like that? Oh, we're course. talking monthly here, friend. Yeah, monthly. Yeah. No, there's a lot of people are going to lose their job. Reset 2030 is they're going to try and eliminate people's debt. And they're going to say, look, you lost your job, but you also lost your debt. So now you don't really have to work, but as long as you just get everything from the state, you'll be fine. You won't own any of it, though. If you take it from us, if you take the UBI, if you take that check, you can't really own a mortgage, though. Because, like, we're giving it to you, so you don't really own the house. We're just kind of giving it to you. Okay, but in this situation, let's and that's, say— And that's, like, kind of how I believe it's going to be said or expressed, let's say. So if you own a house and now you've lost your job and you have debt on the house yes. and they come in and— don't Remove say, your debt. No, exactly. They'll say, you keep the house. Wherever you were, you keep it. Okay, well, well this is what I want to know. Yeah. Do you get to still live in your house? Yes. Or do you have to move to a condo? No, I think- To you, a public housing? It, it depends on the situation, how much debt you have. Because what if you're like in a mansion and they're like, you get to stay in your mansion. No, I, I, and another I guy's like, would, I have a little house. You get to stay in your little house. I think they would just, just clear it. I think it, it, it's like a credit card wipe. Well, that's is what we- not, Is it not like the slow implementation of like fight, removing fight. money at some point? No, no, it's the no, ability. Money, money is their ability. Money it's is their ability magic. to barter. Money, no, and money is their magic. Money, the, the story of money and the fear around money and the fact that we need more and more and more of it and it's a perpetual growth system mm -hmm. and that it is a social currency is the magic wand that they're waving in front of all of us that's making everyone sell out. That's why people are cutting down trees and forests. That's why they're freaking bu buying things from China and shipping it over and doing drop shipping and blah, 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 sell all yeah. over the world for any knickknack and thing. Because at the end of the day, it, it, we're we're... It's an easy mathematical equation. It's an easy That's mathematical it equation. And it's, and it's a it's a great, it's the God that the most amount of people in the world believe in. Because they see it work. It is the world's biggest religion. They see it work. If you think about money from another perspective or another context, it is just the world's biggest religion that we all believe in. Mm -hmm. And not everyone believes in it, but a very strong majority believes in it. And, and it works for them. 
In many now cases. how now how is it a magic? It is basically tied to time, which is another form of and magic. It has symbol. G- g- time is money, right? Yes. Both these things are forms of magic that are intertwined. The fact that they even that exists, that that statement exists, yeah. is, is interesting. Yeah, because they're both magic. It's Gregorian calendar shit. This is owned by the Vatican and run by Jesuits. They came up with time, and if you run on their time, then you're part of the system that they control. And you think, oh, it doesn't matter. I just say it's 12. And it, da, da, da. Yeah, dude. And, but uh, it's, wait, it also says it's Monday. It also says that you get paid $21 an hour. And you think that's a thing. There's people in this world that don't operate like that, friend. Like, when I work an hour, it doesn't. it's not always the same fee. Because that's not how the universe works. Wisdom with D right here. It's just not how it works. Sometimes you strike gold, friend. Sometimes you're in the mine and you work for an hour and you struck a nugget. And that's just what it is. And you know this too. Sometimes you're at, you're at the flow. You don't even have to push that hard and it just all happens. Oh, that's my because you're, because you're there at the right time. But I'm if you thought attention. Gregorian calendar, I'm only supposed to work from nine to five, then sometimes you're pushing against things that don't work. You're there and it's just not working because the energy is not right. And had you just allowed yourself to be, you would have never been in that situation. But it's a form of taxation and money and, and you're in a farm. You're in a farm. And uh, there's no real way out of the farm. There's only um, a side economy that you might not be aware of if you're not part of it. Well, the best way out of the farm is to start your own farm. Of course. Definitely. That's what I'll say. Because when you really boil it and distill it down, we are all trying to eat, shelter, and fuck. This is what we're trying to do. So the fucking is already handled. They have apps for that, right? (laughs) Now, the problem is, Shout out we don't it. all have housing. <laughs> or whatever, whatever latest app people are using. We don't using. all have housing, so we have to work to pay for the housing. Mm-hmm. And we don't know how to make food either, so we have to work to get the food. But really, we just needed those two things, but we're working to constantly buy them perpetually. It's not well, so we're going from A to B through C in many yes. scenarios. And yes. we're just always using the interface of money. And that's when why the farm on. makes sense. But when you use money all the time, what you're doing is you're using the, you're you're entering the system where it's being taxed consistently. Yeah. It's being taxed in fees from your bank. It's being taxed in fees in your transferring from currencies, different currencies. It's being taxed through the government, through everything you buy with money. So it's this constant chipping and gnawing away at the money that you actually earned. So it's a weird way of, it's actually kind of the weakest way of trading. Because if you were to trade in other things, then you don't have to have that same tax involved. I think it's, a, I think it's always going to be necessary. Humans will always find a certificate sure. of, of, of worth because you don't always want to be traveling with the actual worth, yes. uh, possibly due to robbery, right? So you don't want to be yes, always in that... So um, we're going to do that. But what I want to bring up is if you have a farm Mm -hmm. and the farm produces and the farm produces enough money to pay the state with they want the taxation on the land. And we also paid for a building. Now we have the building paid for by the food and we also have the runoff of the food. So now what happens? Now you're free because all you your whole life, you were just trying to get those two things. And this could be for every person if we realize that we're putting so much money into things like they're putting 4.2 million into getting Kenyans jobs in Canada, Kenya, like cool. But and what about, what about about if we just put some farms here that we desperately need? Yeah, like to grow our own food. Yeah. And then what? You're going to give them vaccines. That's what the, it's for. You're giving them vaccines, right? The Kenyans. Yeah. They need apparently, cause I haven't been, it's probably like a utopia, mm-hmm. but they're saying they need food and water. So why don't you give them food and water? Why are you going there with a fucking, Vaccine. Why don't you just make them make the food? They need, yeah, they need food. We're going to vaccine them. It's like, no, they need food and water. Yeah, but vaccine. vaccine. <laughs> <laughs> There's polio spikes everywhere. Uh, what are you going to do? Needle. We eradicated. <laughs> do you remember when people are like, they eradicated polio with the vaccine? It's like, bro, it's because there's still polio happening to this day. So it's such a weak argument. It's like, they did not eradicate it. And if you want, I well, could go they, the other direction with it, but I won't because we don't, we don't, we don't have to go there. there. But go it's there. not eradicated. It's literally still happening. It does still, it does still exist. That is true. So that happening. argument of like, it eradicated. No, it didn't. Okay. didn't. Stop fucking saying that. <laughs> oh the, the medicine of, uh, that we have in the Western world is garbage and everyone needs to admit it. You go into a stainless steel building with fluorescent lights. They know nothing well, about it, health. What's garbage is outsourcing your health. Yes. That's the that's the best way of saying what I think is just the, the worst way of going about things is to try and not outsource your health. Meaning, are you moving? Are you eating things that are alive, that were f- fairly freshly p- uh, picked, picked ripe, 
not necessarily like at the right moment, mm-hmm. right? Not necessarily frozen and shipped from around the globe. And also just getting your body moving, being mindful of your posture, being mindful of what you what you do, how you treat yourself. Grow like a plant, you, you know? Grow. Yeah, grow. Exactly. Just grow in grow. every way. And 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 mimic nature in, yeah. in some ways, right? Like just go out there and, and regenerate yourself in the same way that re- nature regenerates itself. And it should be obvious to most people that whenever you went to a doctor, they didn't take the time to look you... Unless you went to a holistic doctor, then they're like... They took you all the time. They told you like a when were you stories. born? Tell you me want the stars. Your... Tell me the stars when you were born. Were you born at 12 a.m. or 2 p.m.? Oh, you're a human design projector. Oh, yes, wow. but you see your moon is in Sagittarius, so oh. really you shouldn't be taking this burdock So route. really, your trigger right now, well, it's just because your moon is in Sagittarius, and <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not going to accept that because I'm a cancer. Uh, the Neptune will conjunct with Saturn in the next coming days, so you'll be fine. Yeah. But now you might have is... a meltdown and eat a whole tub of ice cream, and that's okay. Now, uh, for the people who are actually that believe this stuff, so do we. You know what I mean? Like yeah, these yeah, things are right. these things are all possibly true. You're, you're I mean, definitely. we are definitely influenced by these waves. We live in an electromagnetic sea, and that's why some people are worried about the electromagnetic pollution that goes along with the sulfur pollution and all the other pollutions that are in this world. Mm. There's. To me, like it's becoming obvious that there's actually like a there's some towers. There's a, there's a war going on. There, there has been a war going on there's for a long for, time. For a long time, and now we're in some sort of like a real situation where um, we got to admit it to ourselves, ladies and gentlemen. There's a, a genocide that is going on right now, and everyone was trained as a kid to to care about genocides, how awful they were. Mm-hmm. And now you're living through it, and you told yourself as a kid that if ever there was a Hitler, never, never if ever there was a Hitler, I'd be there first thing. Yeah, well, some of you who literally said that are siding with the government right now. And government sponsored genocide is the biggest killer in the world. It's because they don't believe that that's. That if you genocide. study history, it's always the government that genocides. Of course. It's always the government. Well, it's always the, the power structure. Who claims the right to do so? It's not a rando man who's like, I'm alone with my friends in genocide. There's a little bit of that. They did that in um, Indonesia. There was 100 people that died. This is a hot topic, dude. In Indonesia, there's people going around killing. Yeah, there's some crazy stuff going on. There's some killings going on. Yeah, a lot of stuff. And on on YouTube, they censor it. Yeah. It's wild, though. And it's wild because, like, don't Like, people are being. Basically, the story is that these people are being murdered. And if you talk about how they're being murdered, you get censored. That's not right. So what, you're for the murdering of these people, YouTube? Well, no. are you? I, it, I, it's, it's, the, it's like the whole school shooter idea, right? It's like if they, don't, if they don't promote more of it, then at the end of the day, it might like stop it from happening. Meaning if, like, if you know the name of the school shooter, it might actually in, embellish that someone who feels like a nobody can be a someone and then shoot up the next school. So it's, it, it, they're, justifying, they're justifying it by saying, like, if you don't see beheadings, you don't think about beheading people no, in, a, possible, weir- yeah, in a weird possible. way. But they, it's, it's just that they're, the group that's doing the killings yeah. is, is a protected group by YouTube. Sure. And that's where it becomes a, an issue because, like, sure. why would you protect them? Yeah. But your argument makes total sense. And this is like, this is normal debates that people should be having. Like, well, that's why they're trying to not show people who go like streaking on a football field or, or, you know, like they're trying to not give the attention to things. Well, remember when they did that in football? Remember when they did that in football? Where it's like, you can't dance after the end zone? After the touchdown? You can't Uh, gloat, yeah. uh, That was your viral content there, NFL. Where people who weren't watching football got into the world of football. Yeah, because of the dance. Because of something different. A different type of Because of something. And just because they're going to make more jersey sales or what? Like, I don't understand what the hell that was at. A guy on the plantation is acting out. That literally how they acted. They acted like oh. slave masters. They, they are slave masters in a way. They are. I mean, that has nothing to do with of, race. At the end of the day, it's a gladiator. It has nothing to do with race. When you so go to school so and they rugby. say, we're going to give you a fucking tuition, friend. We're going to give you an education. Hey, you. We're going to give you an education. But we can't play you for football. Get in there, friend. And they sell Smash all your... your they sell the tickets. They sell the jerseys. They sell they the hot the dogs. Money. They make all the money off And you. you make none. And you can't even get sponsors. And and you're not allowed to get sponsors. And if you blow your knee and you blow your whole career, they don't give a you're fuck. You're done. That you're is, done. That is a slave. Every single athlete is a slave whenever they sign a Nike contract and they can't wear an Adidas shoe. You're not free. They catch you in the shoe, you get fined. That's part of the contract. Mm-hmm. If you're not wearing the shoe, bro, that's not fair. And then what happens? They kill you. Same time. They kill you in your own helicopter. Again, they kill you in your own helicopter. After you know. (laughs) Oh, 
Just be throwing that out there. Oh, apparently, and like, apparently, like, his name spells Corona or something. I don't know, some sort of craziness. <laughs> Have you ever heard the Joe Biden text thing? If you divide 2020 by, by 666, it's Joe Biden's text in number for text in to vote. That's weird, bro, because everyone's accusing you of worshiping some sort of 666 thing, and then you're like, you know what? Make sure our number equates back to that 666. Make sure you times it by 666, it makes 2020, okay? Oh, it's a coincidence. So everything's a coincidence at one point. It's a coincidence that you're being accused of that and those things are happening to you. That's weird. We live in strange times. We live in very strange times. And like to run away from these excite exciting things is to miss the show. Imagine like... Oh, I'm not missing any show right imagine now. Imagine the ultimate show is going down and you're like, nah, like, nah. I'm it's gonna, literally on TV. I'm going to play PS5 right life. now. And you're playing PS fucking 5 right now. And the craziest thing ever is going on. You were given the right to reincarnate in this body to see one of the craziest things ever. Wait a second. Are you saying I shouldn't be playing PS5? I like think 17 hours a day. Jesus. <laughs> we talked about this outside having a smoke. You, everyone has to understand, they pay millions to have people in electrodes attached to their brains to find out when dopamine is being released when you play these video games. Yes. They have you in a cycle of dopamine release. You will get agitated. You will get anxious if you're not back in that cycle. That's how they keep... And they have, they're just constantly hitting your, your reward center. Yeah, and it's not that they're part of the Matrix and they want you in the Matrix. No, uh, they just want you to keep they playing. They want you... It's just... Keep playing. If they don't do it, they're going to do it, and they're going to do it, so we have to do it. It's Whatever, just but it's capitalism. That it, it, it's capitalism, but it's true. Yeah. It's true, because if they didn't do it, somebody else would do it, because people are going to do it. Now, now listen. It's just the game wild. is fun. Yes, you're getting dopamine release, but there's an addiction. It's literally kind of like doing heroin. It is. It's, 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 it's faster than heroin. So, because it's like, so you have to, you have, you have to admit to it to yourself. You, it's hardcore. You have to admit that it's fucking hardcore. I'm going to fucking bang this speedball right now and fucking take a line, but then chill out before you die. Right? Mm -hmm. So, like, play for a bit, but when you're out, you're out. And you have to override their system. You literally have to override it. Yeah, but people get addicted and they get lost in it, specifically when they're forced to stay home and do whatever. Like, video games is a big release. It could be a very good thing. In some, in no, certain we're going to get real right now. If you're playing video games and then you're masturbating and blowing your wad and then playing more video games and that's your day. There's a lot of people doing I that. just said that out loud and everyone heard that's your day, friend. So just think about that. You don't want that to be your day, but when it's said back to you and you heard that, you're fucking, you're what? You're ashamed of yourself. So why are you doing that? What's your day? I mean, I'm not. No, no, I know. I'm just like, <laughs> you know, you have to be real to the person who's doing that. It's just like, think about it. Yeah. And they... It's it's not it's not your fault. There's like a a weaponized system that is I know. that wants you it's a in pleasure. there. It's a pleasure center. It's a it's a constant need for pleasure. And in, in the same way that people get addicted to gambling or of any other vice, mm -hmm. because it's this need to like either numb themselves or excite themselves to to kind of like go up or down. And I believe in total freedom. State. I believe that like they have the right. No, they, they have, have the, the right absolute to right of to own you like that. And you went for it. The devil has the has every right to sell you a lie. Every right. Yeah. But you have to know where doesn't you mean you have to buy it. It doesn't mean you have to buy it. Doesn't it. mean you have to sell your soul. And and in the world where like you want it all censored, you, you don't understand. It's gonna be like that world times a thousand and the good stuff will be taken away. And now and now all of a sudden they'll just have like blurred out porn and you'll be like, No <laughs> The way it's going, honestly. Imagine I, imagine, honestly, there would be a revolution if they blurred out all porn. The, the porn, is the biggest, literally, porn is the biggest weapon. There would be an absolute the revolution they will if they not just started censoring away. all porn. When Corona started, what happened? You got free porn on Pornhub or whatever. That's when it was not free. It's no, no, but they gave like the premium. I mean, the free, the, 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 the premium. The, the, free, the, the free part, the thing that's not free is your data. The fact that you're like tuning in and then you're, you're giving your attention, obviously. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the fact that it kind of sells you out. It sells you out emotionally. It sells you out. In, it just sells you out in your, in your own life as a human. You know what I mean? Oh, and every, so, everyone knows there's all kinds of studies that are done that if you are participating in the pornos, we're talking about guys here. I don't know. I don't know girls. Okay. I haven't seen these studies, but for guys, uh, you'll be prone to premature ejaculation, um, erectile dysfunction. Um, what else? Uh, just like expanding, continuously expanding fantasies where you have to go like deeper and deeper, further yeah, and further. Also abuse. Definitely these are abuse. real things that we have to admit to ourselves that, that this thing in our society is causing more harm than good. And that's not to say, again, this freedom, baby. You can have the porno. But you have to be able to have this open discussion that this thing is kind of evil. It's kind of 666. Yeah. So we have to be like, okay, it's 666 shit, so we're going to do it, we're going to do it. If it's done by actors, in a sense, in a, a controlled environment, and it's not dangerous, is there a case, and I'm not saying I agree with this or not, I, I'm asking, 
is there a case where the fact that let's say somebody's a pedophile and they're just like naturally born a pedophile in the same way that somebody's naturally born gay let's just assume right yeah. they're just attracted to younger uh bodies or okay. younger people is it better that they were to be able to see something like that that mimics that or is like some level of that no way yeah no way yeah i, I don't buy it either i don't think i don't but, buy but that the, I, I just don't buy it but I'm, I, I think it, I think it, it kind happens of right it, it happens it, it happens happen. regardless which but that's my personal stance on it is you do not give these people any kind of gateway to that thing is wrong. What you're thinking is wrong. I don't care who you are. The child cannot consent and you're stealing their innocence. Finished. I don't care. And you know what ends up happening is they kidnap kids and they do terrible things and they keep them in cages Yeah. for this kind of end. Okay. Because it gets worse and worse and worse to the point they want to snuff them at the end because what they did to them was so bad because that person might come back later and kill them. Okay. That's the seriousness of that topic. So, it's a world that it happens. It happens because we live in a free world, but we have to admit it like all these other things that that kind of shit is fucked up. And if they're into, if they're part of the administration of, of Netflix and all these things, and that's why these weirdo shit's happening, then you need to be called out for who they are. And everyone needs to back that movement of you do not have a role in society if you participated in that because you're anti-human. You are ruining the next generation and it's the worst thing you could ever do. It's a crime against humanity. <laughs> that's that was the one I was going for. I was going for the applause on that one. I was going for the applause. No, I think they're 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 definitely uh, it's definitely a thing, yeah. and they're trying to hide by um, PC culture, and they're trying to get their they're trying to get in. And every time they test the water, they get like, "Hey, no, none of that." Oh, okay, okay. Oh. But uh, they def <laughs> they definitely exist, and it's um it's a reality. But we were talking more about things that we can control, like. Um, the porno in, in our world and stuff like that. There should be strip clubs. Well, you, Montreal you runs on strip clubs here's and super sex is closed. I agree. No, this is a nightmare. I, I, I no see. habs, no that. super sex, bro. Oh, God. Montreal, this is crazy. Montreal's done. And you know, but what? you know what? You know what? It must have exploded, though. The, the, like, like the, the OnlyFans scene, the, the, um, the, like, kind of professional hooker scene or the people who come over kind of scene. Like, you know what I mean? Like, a lot of, like, you know, sketchy phone call uh, type it's, things it's, like that. You're, like, definitely, you're definitely right. There's a lot of more of that for sure. A the, the, lot. Well, I said at the beginning, that. when this economy goes down, prostitution, sex stuff is going to balloon. Balloon, of course. So, uh, Particularly in Montreal. Yeah, so all the girls out there, if you're involved in that, be safe. You know, obviously the, the OnlyFans is a good option, but I'll tell you one thing. It could Would be. you ever buy a girl's OnlyFans? Me, no. It's just not, it's just not going to happen. Non There's people that you'll be able to milk. But, but like, I can imagine, you know what though? You know what? I, I can imagine that if I got infatuated with somebody in some way, shape, or form, and it's possible. You would just give them a hundred bucks. Well, I would ask You'd be like, hey, come on, we're going to go out to the spa. And I would gonna... do like the real life version of it. Yeah, we're going to go fucking to the spa. And then you ended up paying more than $5. Yeah. I would, like, just, I would just like be, yeah, I would be, I would be. If you want to be with a girl, there's no way you're giving her five bucks over the internet like that. There's just like, it's, you're if, immediately, you're immediately now in the, you, the friend zone married, of the future. This 2020 married, friend zone. If, no, if you're married or you're in a relationship and it's kind of like unrealistic that maybe you're not going to be able to get this girl because she's too hot and you're ugly. Okay, hold whatever, on. Your like, boyfriend just gave $5 a month to this other girl in town sure because that that's happens. what, but that's what fans, right? You want to see this girl happened. in town naked. Yes, basically. Bro, girl, girls, how do you feel about this? Not good. Nobody no, good man, you can't be no, given no another girl feels good about bucks. the fact. Nobody, no girl feels good about the fact that there's so much porn and that there's so many men watching it either. You think? People, of course. I don't know. I'm not a girl. I sure, but I've mm -hmm. spoken to girls. Okay, there, okay. I mean, I've spoken to girls about like porn. That girls aren't necessarily excited about porn. They shouldn't, or they shouldn't be. Nobody should be, in a sense. You it depends. I mean? You could watch it together. Like the old it, world of porn. There's so many ways. There's so many ways where it could be super healthy and some. And it, it, it's everything depends. It's on everything. How you it's take nuance. It. Yeah. It's everything. Nuance. It, yes. Everything depends on how you take it, and how addicted you get to it, and what it, what you let it do to you. Mm -hmm. Right. But I definitely remember like some people in our lives that that it affected, and it's uh, that's when I realized that this is a serious thing. It's a thing. It's a thing where just like we were talking about the video games, there's a dopamine release and there's an addiction that could be formed. I think there's a lot, it's a right of bad. I think many men have gone through it in their life for sure. Everyone's gone through it. I think every man I know has gone through some level of a porn phase for sure. Mm -hmm. If not, most men are still in it. But it, most men I still know. And the truth is like you have to be able be honest with yourself. It robs you of your um your masculinity. And uh, some of your some of your vital nutrients, everything you eat, uh, thirty percent or more is being made to make semen. Uh, if you're constantly shooting it in a wastebasket, then your body has to keep. You know that's how you get gray hair, friend. 
is uh is that and i've been participating in um um semen retention since i'm 20 something since i'm like 21 maybe and i have a kid figure that one out <laughs> uh but but at barely, around barely did work that time well look <laughs> when you get when you get into it uh, you know it's about edging Really, if you want to get super complicated, yeah. it's about the art of edging mm -hmm. and uh, going to a high vibrational state without freaking out yeah. and, and, and slowly gain it more and more and more and building. more and more and building it. And you keep, you keep that energy. After you guys blow your load, we all know what happens. You guys take a little nap, you know, <laughs> sleepy time, and you go to bed. Okay, but if you don't, Not imagine yet. like all that energy that you just felt is, pulsing through, you. is pulsing through you. Because it comes back into your body. Yeah. Yeah. And then eventually after the, the, this is like ancient knowledge. This is only taught by sages uh, to this is the kings. Kama Sutras of sorts. Yeah. It's an art. This is the art of why we have penises and vaginas and they get hard and the other one gets wet. Um, it's electromagnetic. Electromagnetics are happening. When you wear a condom, listen, friend, that is uh, plastic and not electromagnetic. So it's stupid. Take that thing off. Learn how to have semen retention. Mm. And also for girls, there's co contraceptives like uh, Queen Anne's Lace. And also telling yourself you don't want to have yeah. a baby. These are all things that are that have proven to exist. And just knowing your cycle and things like that. And as yeah, well. being responsible yeah. with your with the tools God gave you. So um, as you as you keep the se the semen inside, it gets given back to the uh, ganglia of nerves that distributed the the nutrients to it. And these are the chakra systems. So the first one that will be given back to you is the root chakra, your anus that you just bleached, and it's nice. <laughs> the people are about to lick it. And then after, <laughs> and then after it's the gonads or whatever girls is over or some shit like that. Oh my but God. it's the ganglia of nerves that climb oh. the spine, and eventually you'll get it given back to the brain. And when you get it back in the brain, you'll have a real clarity and possibly extrasensory perceptions, or what you would call extrasensory. Mm. You'd start to, you know, I don't want to say a full of schizophrenia, but hunches and stuff like that, dreams and stuff like that. This you is all just pulsing energy. This is like your high vibrational state. That the higher self, potentially. And possibly the metaphor of the Garden of Eden and the apple. And after they knew they were naked and stuff like that. It could be a story of uh, not knowing. It's like not taking the forbidden fruit. Yeah, which is, which is the orgasm of a, for a guy. To some degree, yeah. Because it's not necessarily the same for women. It's almost like the w women are like bringing in the energy. And they could have multiple orgasms and it's good for them. But if the guy loses his vibration then they have to start again at zero i think it's also but they can a story they can that's build. saying that it's kind of the it, it's kind of an ancient story that says it's the woman's fault for being seductive of sorts which is a kind of unhealthy story but but it is you know i think what many men respond to which is that they are being seduced in many scenarios and they are giving it up constantly that's well geez wouldn't would you have it any other way <laughs> i wouldn't have it any other way I guess, yeah. I Imagine know. they're just like repulsive and you're like, I got to do this with a sexual energy right now, girl. Oh, God, don't, don't no, look at me. Of oh, course, God. of course not. But, but You I want it to be I seductive think... and you want it to be a battle because that's what it is. They always like- It's, yeah, a, it's, it's a struggle. It's, it's, a, yeah. it's meant to be a little bit of a, of a back and forth struggle or a game of sorts. It's, it's a tug of war of power and energy and, and it's love something that we don't really talk about. We don't really talk about it a lot in our society, but um, a lot of the opening times that you meet a person and there's sexual tension. Um, there's a lot of lust that builds. So you're having sex, but there's a lot more lust in the mix of the recipe. And then eventually, as you have a relationship with this person, that lust is going to peter off because that's what lust does. That's what lust does, yeah. It peters off. And if you didn't build love to take its place and go to the higher realms, then you might just lose the relationship entirely. And you have to initiate love. You have to actually look for reasons to love a person and, and, and engage in it. You have to, yeah, you have to engage in it exactly. You have to ha you have to have a curiosity. You have to have a kindness. A, a, a you have to give it attention, care. Yeah, you have um, to generally care about the person. Absolutely, you have to and, notice. You have and to one listen. thing that I've learned because I'm thirty in my thirties now is when you're younger, you're always like uh, imagining the, that the, this perfect girlfriend, and then you're like you're always thinking that the girl could change, and this might be happening for girls too. That you think about the you person, people's but, potential. Yeah, but you go after like this imaginary illusion of them, which could be very powerful. Sometimes. If you both believe in an illusion. It's a huge catalyst. Sometimes. If you both believe in a god and a goddess, yeah. but they're illusions, then you might attain them. And this is totally. a beautiful thing. I, to some degree, live some level of that. But we if some do. people, but if, but if um, your partner 
you're kind of like down on them because they're not living up to this and that, just remember that you should always love them for who they are. And if you really wanted them to change, the best way to and do that is to show yourself. them love. And it's just a mirror of yourself. And it's a mirror of yourself. And that's the craziest thing of all. If you wanted to change the people in your life, you just, just have love to them. love them and they'll love you. But also what I, where I was going with this is it's a mirror of yourself. So like there's obviously times in my life where it's like, ah, I don't want to hang out with these type of people anymore. And you go into a oh, little hermit phase and you change yourself. Totally. And when you come out, you, come you, out as a you new match character. you match the vibrations that you come you out have as changed. a new character. And um, life is like a video game in that way. And it's happening every day in your life. Like you're you're close to the vibration. You run into someone, they have that vibration, and they're like, and, "Oh, you want to have a drink?" And then like go down a rabbit hole in a yeah, different way. Yeah, but then but then also you could you can you go, one you can, can go move. down and one could you go can up. Be like, all right, I'll see you later, and then just keep going on your way and do the thing that you're going to do. But and what I was going to say earlier is that at the end of the day. At the end of the day, when we're talking about gambling or porn or video games or, or anything, even media, even, even media, mm -hmm. if you're in a consumption mode versus creator mode, that's where the game changes. Because at the end of the day, the difference between your mindset and, and maybe a, somebody who's in a more traditional mindset is, is that every day, for the most part, you're creating and you're creating the rules of the game of or of your own day. You're creating like what you're going to do and what you're not going to do by just deciding and essentially saying, I'm going to spend my time making things that other people can see and enjoy. And if they want it, they can just zoom it. But most people spend their time in some level of consumption where the rules are set in, by other people. Mm -hmm. And so that's why they play by those rules because they believe that those rules somehow work. And it does because they went in line and the next person in line at the cash gets the coffee at Timmy's. And family and then, guy comes then, out at 8 p.m. on Tuesday. Exactly, and, exactly, yeah. exactly. But once you start making and creating... Uh, it happens to everyone. I see it. Oh, I love seeing a, a new artist find their wings. Yeah. Or any they find business. Niche or they find like they're, they're, as soon as they make they get it validated. In yeah. It. It's like, I want that. And they're like, this, this thing that I have made with my hands. Sure. And they get, take it. And they get a barter. They can get money or they get a barter and, and it begins a cycle. Yeah. And then they won't just make that one thing. Eventually they'll be doing probably three things. Well, if they're, if they're not scared enough, they're scared though. And but, so many people are scared. But it doesn't mean you have to quit your job. You could literally just. A listen to podcasts like this and, and do the thing that you kind of like doing and Quit that's you. what the economy is. Because you could probably be doing it at your job anyway in most people's cases. Yeah. You could probably do your job in like two or three hours and then spend the rest of the five hours just doing whatever the hell you wanted. Specifically now that you're working from home. And even if you don't like succeed where you're as famous as Michael Jackson and killed by your own doctor, who cares, bro? It's still awesome. Yeah. You know how many people in this world did like what they, you travel and you meet some people and you're like, wow, I never would have known this person had I not met him, but that person was fucking cool. And uh, they're living people, their own there's life. There's people who do the most amazing things all over the globe. It's, a, it's an amazing opportunity that people are, look, people scuba dive for a living every day. They're just going underwater into the ocean and just looking at fish with tourists. Yeah. That's amazing. That's an amazing, that's so crazy to me. There's people who make audio for a living or podcasts for a living. They tell stories or make art for a living. Mm -hmm. There's people who, who teach for a living. You know what I mean? There's so many layers of life that you can, you could just take something that at the end of the day has value for other people. And this is where the school system totally failed. Well, the school it system- absolutely failed. It failed in so many ways because we didn't have mentorship really. Yeah. And they didn't pay our teachers enough, which I, you know, I do think that we need to just have better situations. We just teachers. can't. And we, we have to realize that we just can't outsource education, that education is everything, that you're always educating, you're always learning. Everything you do, everywhere I go, when I go to the gym, cut, I'm learning, think when about I'm going what they here, I'm learning, that, when I'm speaking to you, when I'm we learning. When high school, they cut, uh, there was no more shop class that where they had cars. That school yeah. used to have a car garage type scenario where yes. you would learn about cars. Yeah. That's super useful because, you know what, everyone's driving, driving these things. Cars, yeah. So what? We shouldn't learn about that. We didn't really learn about money. We they probably don't even have banking. them cutting wood anymore, taxes. bro. They probably don't even have them cutting wood anymore. They probably don't, yeah. And then, yeah, they didn't talk to you about credit cards, which as soon as you got out of there, they ran you with credit cards. Yeah. Hey, you want to sign up this credit card? You, oh, what? you're 18 years old and you're going to buy irresponsibly they... at the Debrunner? Perfect. The, you know who the best teacher was? Denzel Washington. Daz Dazel. Mm. Because he yeah. had a business. I never he had him. He wasn't my teacher. Oh, but... he had a business yeah. and then he became an economics teacher when his business was like kind of... Mm -hmm not going to pay all the bills. So he had an actual understanding of how well, we he, he were going to make an economy or enter the economy. He had an understanding because he had done it. Yeah. But the teachers who never had done that, they're talking about a textbook that literally had the hidden hand of the market. And I remember this in economics class. Yeah. They talk about the hidden hand. Invisible hand. Uh, bro, because uh, that's corruption. 
when you talk about a, an invisible oh, hand. An invisible hand that's just grabbing these are taxes our, out of your These pocket. are our mathematical equations that make total sense, except yeah. for when... When the, our hand comes into your pocket and pulls it the out. The invisible hand. Yeah, the invisible hand. Wow, could you believe it? Well, it's a collective flag of sorts. It's a belief in a collective flag. And that collective flag is just a belief that... It's okay. Well, yeah, and that somehow, it's, somehow it made the system that you're in to begin with in some way, shape, or form. That it's like kind of... That's worked because they're here and they have video games and TVs and and. Oh yeah, everyone needs to hear is like everything you're, you're told is probably a lie, okay? Your history is a lie. Just it's just it's a not that it has to be lie, a lie. Bro. It's just that you should just think about it critically and then yep. take what you need from it and realize that there's some things that might be false about it and that your perception of things is the truth or lie at the end of the day for you. But it's so, so many people. Many people go. accept. Many people can see the exact same situation and accept two same two truths. Both of which actually are in a way true. The one that's true for you and the one that's true for me might be different. Yeah. And and that, but they're both true because if I play by that rule, whether I believe the truth is in this direction or in that direction, it's possible that we both come out the other end with the same, in the same sense, an outcome, the same outcome. And so both of them are feel true. And so truth is a very, very funny thing that we try and like nail truth, but it is subjective in so many ways. I just think it's so entertaining that to not participate in the truth-seeking act is like you're not having fun. I feel like Nicolas Cage in a fucking movie where it's like you're looking at this research and it's like, oh my God, the people that were on the Titanic were the people that were supposed to sign the declaration to not have the Federal Reserve Act and that's what happened at the Titanic. What? Yes. Really? And people who, who knew about the sinking of the Titanic weren't part of it and then after it sinks, they sign in Federal Reserve. Federal Reserve Act is... A private bank that runs the U.S. interest rates and 19, prints their money. 1913. Before that, it was backed by gold. I don't know if they changed that afterwards, but the Federal Reserve Act is the act of having private bankers run Federal Reserve Bank. It's a, after it's, a Great Depression, which was obviously institutionalized, and r well, the bank war, run. After war. But the bank run was done through media. When you look back on this with the eyes of history and, and a critical, critical look at what's going on, you see that J.P. Morgan, who owned a lot of the newspapers, had declared the bank run, which caused the run on the banks. But the banks also were the ones giving out these loans in this new fractional reserve style where they didn't have the money. So if you all come at the same time, they're not going to have it. Yeah. And that struck panic. Now, why would J.P. Morgan do that unless he, he had a plan? Stuff. He could buy, buy all your, your stuff assets. after you fucking broke it. So this is so obvious. It's Kibona. Why would someone do this? Obviously, it's like, it's not even that far fetched. It's just like he, and then he bought all your things. He literally did, and then did the crime. He set it up and then did it, and then there he is doing it. And um, and those are the same people that after that claim that the market was so volatile because they fucked it up that they need to do a Federal Reserve where now they control the money forever. And this is kind of the what's happening right now. They're setting the crisis, and they're saying like, you better fucking. If you want this to end, you got to really listen to us. And then they're going to say, oh, to make sure it never happens again, we need total control forever. And it's like, okay, but you made it up. You had Chinese people followed in the streets and, and you were filming it. <laughs> there they it's, go. It, it's <laughs> wild to me that somehow in China, this doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. They're totally open. Do you know that? They're like having parties. Woo. Well, Chinese parties, but they, they were. They're still having parties. Yeah, well, Chinese parties. Sure. Oh, wave, wave pools full of people. If your social score is too low, you can't come to the party. Dude, they've got like metros or subways packed to the bar. Oh, yeah, you gotta people, see like bro. videos China's, of like China's insane. Wuhan province Dude, and like social and they're having like pool parties. No, social, like, that's where it started. Because it's not even possible. Social distancing is not possible in China. The way the way they're set, dude, the number of sky rises, the number of people in every inch and corner of China is insane. And at the same time, when I do they believe did that the they did. I do they, believe that they did scare them at the beginning for a week or two. No, more than a week or two. I'm sure they, they were building. They were building hospitals in ten days. Two hospitals yeah, in ten days. I'm sure that they had it, but but at a certain point, you have to look at it. This is this might be an international political thing. And, yeah. Well, there's going to be. A, there's and be, why are they open? And the West is not allowed to be. There's going to be a war between. The East and, and not West. only that, the people in the West who claim this in the democracy, the autocrat, the bureaucrats, yeah. they have ties to China and to the CCP. So that's the big question is like, why does Justin Trudeau want lockdown so bad, but he's also selling out all our resources to China? Is he a bought and paid for person? Is it fake? Is it all WrestleMania? I mean, in a way, it's all WrestleMania. Everything is WrestleMania. We, we're and just we need choosing to see this. uphold WrestleMania. And we need to see this right now because like what the Charter of Rights is in Canada, what all those people fought for back in the day, you're spitting on their graves. They literally had to melt their spoons down to form bullets to protect 
the yes. people because the British were going to come and burn down their town. You don't understand, bro. Burn it down in the middle of November. And they did it. They, how did the Acadians end up in Louisiana to become the Cajuns? They burnt all their fucking houses and they had to leave in November on boat and somehow made it. Not all of them, I guess. Mm. But some of them made it and became the Cajuns. That's the type of people that you're dealing with. And the British army was not tough guys. They were slaves. No. You're at sea anybody, for months. Any, anybody who's in an army is some level of slavery. But they had the, they had, it was it's Irishmen, it was belief, Irishmen and stuff like that. Yeah. They had you at sea, dude. They were going to make you walk the plank if you didn't follow the rules. Yeah. So the fear was so intense for sure. that they're like, listen, you, you're going you to burn down these. The, 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 you have to play with the group because the group, that's the only way you eat. And like, this is. You're why, on a boat for months. And this is why we won. Well, freedom won. Is because their army is incredibly weak. The well, army is just a good show. Wins. It's a it's a guy with a tall hat to make you think he's tall. Because good wins. And they're wearing red so you don't see the blood. That's literally their strategy. Hey, we'll make them look tall and wear red. Mm. And meet us in the plains at noon. And everyone's like, yeah, no, friend. We're going to wait for you in the forest until we kick your ass. Mm. And that's what ended up happening. But now we're dealing with uh, human drones. And if we don't deal with the human drones, we all know what's coming next. Robot drones. <laughs> yeah, it's already here. It's already here. Yeah, but... How long have we been going, Jordan? 90 minutes. No, I figured. <laughs> That's a good time. Uh, should we call it? I don't know. We could talk about robot drones for a sec. Yeah, go for it. They're coming. It's going to be Skynet. Do you know there's a company... I know. In, in know, China. In, in China. Called Skynet. And they run loves, the social credit score where they have the where cameras. They have, like cameras that track everyone's faces. Why is it called Skynet? Because uh, I found a really like... <laughs> He really liked the, the, the movie, The Terminator. It was very good. Don't you know that uh, Skynet's evil? Uh, yeah, but he liked the movie. It just, uh, just <laughs> he literally fiction. says like, oh just no, movie. but in China, Skynet's good. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, but that's, that's the party line. Now, I always thought that's, when I was- that's, that's a scripted PR line. Oh, of course, of course. Yeah. I think that uh, when I was a kid, I, was, I always wondered, is China freaking awesome and they just tell us it's garbage so that we never want to have- China's amazing. China's to take it over. Okay, okay, but hear me out, hear me out. Uh, that it's amazing for the people. And they just tell us it's awful because it's so amazing that if we saw how amazing it is for everyone, we'd want it too. Yeah, now you went. It's it's pretty amazing. But is it amazing for the, the residents? It depends what... Res it's like anything. It's like any society, right? It's like some residents are having an amazing time because they're rich as fuck and they have fucking everything. Mm -hmm. And then some residents are slaves. Full on. Is and, it, and, and, and what I want to know is, I want to know is if you descend, if you have like an opinion, are you taken away and killed? Oh, of course. Wow. In many scenarios, for sure. See, that's crazy. That's but beyond. I, 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 I honestly believe that's happening here. Mm. Uh, Julian Assange. Uh, yeah. Kind of. What is he, live in a fucking room? No, he's in fucking jail now. They got him. Oh, okay. They went into the Ecuadorian embassy and they just took him. Well, I don't understand what the problem is. He was there for a long time. You, said that, he, you said that you they wanted him. Why don't you just go him. and take him? What is this stupid thing? It's because it's international law that that's not their 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 okay. country. Okay. Well, How many bases does the U.S. It, have it, it, around it, the world? No, no, of course. But but what I'm trying to say is that that international law, if broken, kind of sets a precedent. What was that the other just thing, anyways? He was saying that the that the they were spying on you. It was just a bunch of stuff. But I mean, why he was being arrested? Is he was WikiLeaks? Of sexual, yes. He's yeah. WikiLeaks. Yeah, he's the guy who's the founder of WikiLeaks. Okay. And, and he sexual? Get, what are you he, about they, they, they basically said he raped people. Like, that's the, the charge against him. Oh, the classic one. Yeah, just like, oh, you Don't raped people. Don't listen her. to anything he said because uh, he, he's rape. Rapist. It's 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 a touchy subject. If you t if you throw that word around like it, you know, he better have done that because if you're throwing it around, you're diminishing that word. Whether he did or not, he had a lot of great points, and it doesn't mean that we should jail him or throw and, the baby out with the bathwater. In a sense. In a sense, because all he really did was make a website where other people would whistleblow. Yeah. So he wasn't a whistleblower. So he could... Well, he was a, he was a megaphone. He was a, a figurehead that, that helps amplify because you need, a, you need anchor. Sure. Sometimes but even if he's like psychopathically interpret. killing everyone in sight, it's like that whistleblower who just whistleblowed that thing really isn't associated it, technically. It, sure. Technically he's not. I mean, look, if he did rape somebody, I understand why they want to put him in jail. Of course. But, it's very, it's an amazingly weird reality that we have people like Snowden or, or you know, anyone like that, any whistleblower essentially, that is being ousted over and over and over again. It's we a weather a bell. It was like at the at first it seemed shocking, but does it seem shocking in the climate of twenty twenty? Feels like there's just going to be more of these people, more of these uh, government dissenters or wrong thinkers, think people who are thinking wrong. 
Because for our great progress forward and to stop pollution, you must think that David Rockefeller, the guy that owns all the oil, is going to save us. That's literally the thing, but they don't want to break it down like that because they don't want to look at a website or they want to research who the hell David Rockefeller is. Mm. But the United Nation has a plan to have an unelected world government to save you from pollution. Now, first, you're going through the virus thing where you have to stay inside and not talk to your friends. That's because that's the plan. But if they told you that just for pollution, you'd laugh. And you'd be like, no, nah, you're an idiot. Well, yeah. They're going to break your economy and then tell you, you know what's awesome? Don't rebuild your economy. We have, we'll rebuild it this way to save you from pollution that they themselves started. And we really need to get our, our head in the game here where this is what they're planning. So when they do it, we laugh. <laughs> no, bud. And we need to educate other people that like, I get it. You're scared and I get it. You want to no new friends. Well, I get it. No new friends. But <laughs> you need to just realize that like, there's At no PS5. There's no, there's no PS5 where we're going. Yeah. You really need to understand that. They took away the Habs. You think there's going to be a PS6? Bro, there's not even going to be anything. If you don't wait... You own nothing to be happy. That guy doesn't have a PS5, bro. He doesn't have. <laughs> and I think, and I think that's where we call it. <laughs> you'll own nothing, and you'll be happy, ladies and gentlemen. I don't believe that, but here's what I do believe: if you got to the end of this podcast, it means you freaking loved it, and you think Germ's hilarious, and you're gonna go find his links. You know where they are. You know where they are, and you're gonna hit subscribe. You're gonna hit subscribe because. Clearly, you enjoyed this. Clearly, you had a good time. Then you hit the bell, too. There's like a ding, 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 ding. Like you hit that bell because then at least you'll see the next episode and you'll see all the clips that come out of it. And uh, we have some cool guests on. So thanks so much for joining. See you in the next episode. We'll do round three another day. I think it's round like four. Oh, yeah? Possibly. <laughs>